G'day guys. Um, this is just going to be one on clotting factors um, in regards to COVID. So somebody actually asked me the question. They sent me a, a link of uh, some lady that actually suffered severe clotting and ended up in hospital, had her legs amputated. So let me just go to that article. So let me just share the screen. Okay, so raw data. Um, this was on the this one about the spikes and all that that I was actually uh, going on and talking about. So there's that handsome man there on his pulpit. Anyway, let's move on. So basically, Minnesota medical worker has both of her legs amputated after contracting COVID-19 just after days after receiving her second vaccine dose. So the vaccine that she actually received was the Pfizer. And pretty much we've been told out there, you know, that the Pfizer doesn't cause any problems. It's the AstraZeneca that causes all these clotting issues. I, I do... Um, uh, differ on that point um the reality is a lot of people talk about the spikes and all that the spikes it doesn't really matter what they are let's put it this way let's i'll just unshare this for a sec just i need to make this point it's irrelevant whether you've basically got get the virus um or mrnas or viral vector all three of these tend to put a lot of mat viral material in the body, okay? So the virus itself will infect and actually make copies of itself and extensively put them all over the, in many parts of the body. That's what a virus does. You know, it exploits the system. It suppresses um, uh, certain mechanisms um, in, the, in the body, you know? So defense mechanisms that that is part of the innate immune system i've discussed this before but uh, and as a consequence it tries to hijack um the cell to basically you know replicate itself well these um vaccines the mrnas the viral vector ones do something similar the only difference is rather than actually replicating the entire virus they just replicate shitloads of spikes and because they're not altered and mutated, um, you know, the actual, the bond area like they've done in the Novavax, they tend to be able to break up and uh, can scatter in a lot of tissue around the body. Um, and that's a problem because what it can actually happen if certain people are prone to clotting um, and, you know, where some people, when they get inflamed, getting inflammation, they tend to cause far more clotting than others. It's genetics and they are more vulnerable. And so whether you get, there's a lot of people that got the virus, had no vaccine and actually had severe clotting and did die from clotting factors. So whether you get the virus or whether you, um, or whether you get one of these vaccines that create a, a large amount of uh, viral um, proteins, you're basically creating a, a, a sort of systemic inflammation throughout many parts of the body. And that's a problem. And especially, you know, she's, um, as you can see, she um, originally came from Nigeria. So this lady, she's sort of a, um, she's been in America for a while, but, you know, she came from there. Um, she would have basically had the tradition of being out in the sun and getting good vitamin D levels. Now she moves to North America. She's in an environment where culturally she's not into, you know, having to stay out in the sun for, you know, her work environment has changed. Now she's indoors working in hospitals, stuff like that, because um, she's a, a medical assistant um, in Minneapolis. So, and she's in a, a much, in a latitude where she's got less exposure, plus, She's like she, you know, um, she's got a 
a darker um, uh, skin complexion, which basically means that she needs more hours out in the sun or needs to um, take vitamin D. So I suspect she's also quite severely vitamin D deficient. She's got some of these, a lot of these clotting factors. And as a consequence of all that, low vitamin D, you get a more, um, uh, a stronger immune response, you know, cytokine type things, endemic through many parts of the, t um, the body, plus more severe clotting factors because of genetics. Um, some people are more susceptible than others. It's just a reality. And, uh, you know, it's just a perfect storm of these things coming together. So it's irrelevant whether it's an AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, um, you know, the Moderna or a Sputnik, which are all viral vectors, which have been sort of criticised for this problem, but it can happen also to these other ones because it's not the actual makeup of the spike or the characteristics and all that. It's basically that you've got too much generated, you know, one generates spikes, the other one, the actual virus um, replicates itself. But there's still a lot of proteins, foreign proteins in many parts of the body that are actually created one, through one process or another. And in low vitamin D populations, which the majority of people are nowadays, you are likely to get an overreaction because the cytokine storm is what kills you. And the cytokine storm, this sort of affect the overreaction of the immune system, which is not tempered and regulated properly with vitamin D, will actually increase the clotting factors in the, in the actual bloodstream. So this is a sort of a severe case. But, you know, I mean, as I've said, whether you get COVID or whether you take one of these type things, if your vitamin D status is not good, you're really playing Russian roulette with your life. You know, you really have to realize that if you've got these clotting factors, you're at risk, at high risk for maybe not this severe case, but, you know, some people have not only lost their limbs, they've lost their lives. So there are issues there. I'm not trying to scare people, panic people and all that. The amount of um, uh, in the population to have these severe clotting factors tend to be very small. We're talking about from 1% to, to 4%. So it's not a big proportion of the population. But the thing is, most people don't know. So this is just basically because you don't know. You haven't done your genetic test, so you don't know where you're at. The best thing you can do for yourself as an insurance policy is maintain good vitamin D status. I can't stress this stronger. In this current environment, especially with the Delta strain, which is, spreads much easier, you're at higher risk um, if you've got these, these um, factors and you're not aware of them because you haven't done genetic tests. Um, let's just take a look at my sort of profile in this regard. So this one here is basically factor seven. There, are, there is another one that's called factor eight, but there's so many, I'm not going to show them. And they tend to be much lower, the associations. They're not like threes. That, you know, they are associated, but they're not basically like, um, like strong statistical strength. Like this is three, which is, and it's anywhere between um, up to sixfold in significance. So, you know, we're getting into the levels, you know, you know, the odds ratio, most of the, epidemiological stuff out there um like if you're um uh, epidemiologist remember but talked about between six and ten they do have disagreements about exactly where but that falls within that level and these other ones definitely seven and with an odds ratio of 11.4 which is at levels which you would get with tobacco so you know this is slightly above or close to the bottom level of that. But, uh, you know, she could have all three of the, um, these genes and a couple of others, which really makes her vulnerable to clotting factors. I mean, in my case, uh, we'll look at this first one. We'll go from lighter to worse. <laughs> and that's the one there. I've already looked at it. Yep. 
So as you can say, see, I'm heteros heterozygous. So I'm I'm basically here. I'm not homozygous, so I'm heterozygous. So basically, that's the common one. So I'm heterozygous. I've got one of the alleles, so it gives me a a two times um, a sort of risk for this these uh, sort of clotting factors. So it's not extremely high, but still is a a bit of an issue there compared to the rest of the population. Very you know, and some. Some others, it's very low. As you can see, most people are in the common. So that's a bit different. Um, it has been noticed in um, people in Germany, this one in particular, to be slightly higher. So, and in European populations, tend to have the Northern Europeans, the highest 3.5. Southern Europeans are about three in that regard. And Mexicans also tend to be a bit more vulnerable with this one as well, where most of the other populations don't. The funny thing, this Kenyan population here, everybody, 99.1%, and there's only about nearly 1% who are homozygous, you know, from one extreme to the other, but a very small percentage. Really strange for, to get something like that in a population. But it is, who knows how it actually came about, but it did. You know, it's one of those things. These are the other ones, which are a bit more severe. So basically, this is factor five. Factor five is a big, biggie in, you know, um, in, that's what's 11.4. Um, I mean, even uh, um, David Diamond, you know, who does, who talks about clotting factors, he talks uh, about this one and factor eight and all that. But this one's a, a really biggie. You know, so let's just check how bad is this boy? Is he screwed? No, he's not. CC, thank the fuck for that. So just think GG, CC, it's the reverse. Um, so, yeah. So basically, in the normal range, <laughs> one down, two to go of the severe ones. Now, 23Me uses this other type. The I version. So, yeah, different companies have different sort of uh, numbering systems. So, GG, which is the common one, Whew, missed that one as well. So, basically, I've got this one, which is the factor um, seven one, but the but not the the worst of the cases. But the other ones I've pretty much don't. Um, and I and I've known that as well anyway. So well, a bit thought I might entertain you people a bit in that regard. But basically, just the take-home message is that all these anything that actually uses the DNA or RNA or whatever that or you know, the virus itself, which uses RNA to replicate itself, is irrelevant. Anything that creates a systemic throughout the body of a lot of viral particles, whether they're active or deactivated or whatever, in a low vitamin D person and with clotting factors like that, is at risk. So vitamin D is still important, guys. So do not neglect your vitamin D status. Critical because you don't know whether you fall into one of those groups. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. Those who have got genetics, they can go and check these out, genetic tests. So I'll put all the info in the description for you so you can just go check and compare your own um, single nuclear polymorphisms and check to see which alleles you've got and what your risk factor so if you've got that and let's say you get it, um, something like that, even though vitamin D helps, I would consider basically if you're getting something like that and you've got these um, clotting factors, even though I don't normally recommend things like aspirin because they do have other deleterious effects, but for a period of time while you're going through that sort of, uh, you know, if you've come down with something like that, it may be a good idea 
this is not medical advice. This is just basically that, uh, you know, an option. There are other options as well um, to reduce sort of uh, clotting factors as well. So there's not only, only that, there are a number of other supplements out there. Um, there are things like L-citrulline, which is a vasodilator, which reduces um, a lot of that stickiness. The other thing that you can do is earth yourself. That's another way of reducing stickiness. Um, you know, more sulfur. So to have a better negative charge in your endothelium. So things don't stick as much. These sort of things you can do. So you may not, I don't use aspirin. And even with that, I still won't use aspirin. But what I'm trying to say is that you've got to consider some sort of strategy in that regard. I'll leave that up to you because at the end of the day, it's your body. You have to decide what you're putting in it. It's not my call. It's your call. And, uh, you know, and if you believe you need to go and discuss this with your physician, that's up to you, what you do, how you go about it. Um, all I can say is there are risks by if you've got these sort of clotting factors, you're at, at a slightly higher risk in that regard. And this is outside the long COVID stuff and all that, which everybody would have a risk from either the virus itself or that if they've got low vitamin D status and a number of and comorbidities and things like that. But this is another level. This is another factor that people need to realize that you could have severe clotting, severe consequences like this lady, or potentially even lose your life as some have. So they are, there are risks from things that actually generate a much bigger load of the proteins, whether it's a spike or that, in uh, endemic around the body. So keep that in mind. For those people that have got that susceptibility, it's really important. The Novavax is a localized thing, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. It's going to, you know, I wouldn't worry at all. But in regards to the others, definitely. Definitely, they, um, they're, uh, the, there are for those, for that small minority in particular, in that regard. But as I said, with all vaccines, it's up to you whether you take one or not, what, whatever your circumstances are and stuff like that. And if you, even if you do or you don't, maintain a good vitamin D status. It's the best security you've got, actually. A well-regulated immune system is your best guarantee, believe me. Anyway, see you.